Okay. Make sure where this one was. By the time the denominator, you cannot get rid of it. If you want, when you get to this point, like I said the other day, because you need to make this x plus 2, just go like this. What's it going to take to make that x plus 2? You can only do it if you do top and bottom, because then you're multiplying by 1. So if you want to set that up, if that helps you, then you can see that you're going to have to multiply this. See it? Once your denominator is the same, multiply your numerator. Okay, distribute, select your like terms, and then do your zeros of your numerator, zeros of your denominator. Originally, when you do your domain restriction, this is the zeros of your denominator. Okay. We're going to put them on a number line. of the numerator go by whatever this inequality sign is. If it has an equal sign, fill it in. Now test. It, these are not easy to picture what they're going to look like, like your quadratics. Your quadratics should know what they're going to look like. These guys go all over the place because they take a break wherever your denominator is. So put this in your y equals the original one. We put that in our y1, and in your y2, if you want, put the one that you changed. If you do this, this has to be the same graph. It has to be the same thing. It'll tell you if you did everything correct. If you remember we did it the other day, and it, I had the wrong sign up there, and it gave us two graphs? It'll show you that it's wrong. Once you find the pieces you need, you need, in this case, you need positive. Take your positive and make your solution. Okay? Probably like that you haven't looked at it since, you know, Thursday. Or did we do it Wednesday? So follow the steps on the, on the first sheet, on the formula sheet. Alright, this one, same process, just a little bit messier. Move everything to one side, so subtract the one. Move the one to the other side. Your denominator now has to be both of these. If it helps, put the other one on top. And put this one on the bottom. Put this one on the bottom, you need the other one. This one on top. This guy, when you move it over to the other side, is going to need both. This is the critical one right here, because you're not subtracting the first one, you're subtracting the product of that whole thing. So you want to foil this whole thing out first, and then you want to subtract it. So this is going to give you plus 3x minus 2x plus x minus 6. This is the entire thing you're subtracting. It's these negative signs that, that get into trouble. Remember the first the first day I gave you those little tips to do and one of them was distributing the negative. It's the negative signs that just catch us up. Make sure you distribute that and you change all of your signs over here. Then collect your like terms. Then zeros of the numerator, zeros of the denominator. Again, your domain restriction is your zeros of the denominator. And do your zeros of the numerator. 
then put it in your cup and test. If you're going to put this in your white equal, do you guys know how to use your fraction box? Second, uh, alpha by equals, right? Alpha by equals. It's easier with your fraction bar. I'm normally not a fraction bar person, but when you put it in your white equals, it just makes it so, so much easier to read. Because if you have to put this in your white equal, even just this, you have to put parentheses around the top. You have to put a separate set of parentheses around the bottom. Okay? So another another space for error. So make sure that you, you use your fraction key. It's, it's alpha, y equal. And it sets it up for a fraction and you don't have to worry about it. Make it look exactly like it is. Questions? Look it over. See if you have any questions. This is really, really important that you can do this. This is the hardest one. This is by far the hardest one. It's, it's probably the hardest because we don't visualize this one. You have no clue what this is going to look like. We'll get to this. We'll be able to graph this eventually ourselves because we'll know where they'll take where they'll take you know a break at. at anything in your denominator is going to take a break. So your graphs are kind of cutting all over the place, especially with this one has two of these. Okay, can everybody test to the left, to the right, in the middle? Okay. All right. Again, you cannot cross multiply this. You can move it to one side and find a common denominator. You need both. So this guy needs an x plus 4. This guy needs an x plus 2. You need both. Get them to one side first. Again, be careful of this negative sign. You need to do this piece first, which is the same as the one up there. Just the sign was a little different in the middle. And then distribute it. Anybody make a mistake right there? Yeah, that's a common one. That's a common mistake. Okay. Collect the like terms. Zeros of the numerator, zeros of the denominator. And let me just move this down so you can see this answer. Good. So everybody can do this like if you want to do. Yeah. Just follow the steps. Okay, number four. Not a bad one. Everything was to one side. But get the X, just put it over one. And then find your common denominator with x. Don't let the, the numerator x confuse you in the denominator x. And then your zeros of the numerator, zeros of the denominator. Remember, the denominator one always is open. So you can't have a zero in your denominator. The numerator one depends on whatever the sign is for that problem. That's why in your answers, some, sometimes you have opens and closed in the same part. One will be from the denominator, one will be from the numerator. These probably had a lot of work to them. Some, sometimes we do problems that have a lot, a lot of work to them. And sometimes it's a little bit easier. These have a lot of work. And, and really, show each step. Because the problem is, when you go to check your work too, you won't know where you didn't, where you went wrong if you don't really write down all your steps. When you get the calculus, you can think there's a couple of reasons to do one problem. So it's so important to keep track of your work. You may decide in college you want to take calculus. Yeah, it depends what your major is. This is a good course to have <coughs> right before you take calculus. So again, we have three terms. This again is going to get us into a little bit of trouble. Make sure you do this first. And this was nice because it kind of was your perfect square. 
and distribute new negative signs, select the right term, and zero to the numerator, zero to the denominator. When you factor, this is key, never factor when a is negative. Just divide them all out, even if seven equal to zero, divide them all out by a negative one. All you're looking for is your root. You're not looking for which way your parabola turns. You're just looking for your root. They're going to be the same regardless if that was negative or positive. But when you factor with a negative here, it makes these signs in the middle change. So it's always trickier. It's going to have a lot of segments. Are we awake today? Well, I'm back here staying up late. And me as well. Get everything to one side. You have one denominator, x minus 1. Factoring is going okay with you? Do you have these two on the paper? Yes. It actually turned out to be not a bad one. I mean, the, both parts were nice and factorable. And then the last one. Get everything to one side, find a common denominator. There was no seven? Okay. I took this one off. I knew one of them I took off. Okay. So we're good? And we said if it was just a quadratic, we could find the root and we could see where it's positive and negative. This is a little different because we have a quadratic underneath a radical. Now the radical itself has a problem. The radical says Look at the radical first, and the radical says whatever is underneath it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this is the part we're going to work with, the greater than or equal to zero. If it was a radical under a fraction, then it would be just greater than zero. So we're going to take this guy, and we're going to set this like this. And we know that this cannot be negative, so it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, you can factor this. This is your perfect square. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to set this equal to zero. We're going to find the root. So we're going to factor this to 8 minus 2x and 8 plus 2x. factor down 4 first and divide by 4 make our life easier. So set them both to 0. So, is that your root? Kind of builds our quadratic right here. Now, you can take this piece and just put the quadratic in your calculator. Which way is it going to open, up or down? Down. Because look at the guy that's attached to the x with the sign. Negative. So it's going to go like this. It's going to go like this. Are we allowed to have it equal to zero here? There's your sign. Yeah. So this quadratic kind of built itself right into our quadratic inequality because it was under a radical. So it automatically gave us a quadratic inequality. And we said we want this time the positive. So up here, positive. You can put it in your calc. You can test to the left or the right to the middle. And here's your domain. Your domain says negative 4, 
the pi to the four. So this radical caused us to have a quadratic inequality. Because we had to take whatever was under the radical and set it greater than or equal to zero. So bless you. Which is our quadratic inequality, right? At the time we did the last three, probably one seven, three, two seven, maybe two seven. Now, if I put this in a fraction, if I did this, what would change? It's got to be greater than zero. So what would my answer, what would my domain be? But you're on the right track, you're on the right track. Greater than zero means it can't be equal to, right? Greater than you, you would still keep the same root. Parentheses. Parentheses, good. But you had, you had it. It had to be greater than zero. So therefore it could not be equal to. Not equal to. So all I was going to do was change it to parentheses. Because now I have the same setup, but I can't use zero. See it? Right. All right. These are things we look at when we do domain restrictions. These are the confusing ones. Okay, here's another one. Which part of the expression do we care about? The numerator or the denominator? The denominator. Do we really care what the x is in the numerator? No, you can have a zero in the numerator. You can have anything you like in the numerator. But we cannot have a zero in the denominator. Now, here's a radical under a fraction. So Paul said it can't be zero. So we're going to take this guy and say, well, it can't be zero, but because of our radical, it has to be positive. So again, we've automatically built a quadratic and a quadratic. You did your quadratic. We did our quadratic. So it's kind of like helping us out here. So we, following the first step, we set this equal to zero. I'm going to take the shortcut, just add nine. So here's your roots, your zeros. These are your zeros of your equation, because we set y equal to zero. I get a three in positive three. Is it going to be opened or closed at the negative three positive three? Mm -hmm. Open. Because now it's in the denominator, and it can't be zero. And which way does that parabola open up? Mm -hmm. Up. Because it's positive. X is positive. Now, this is the positive. Wraps down to the negative, goes up to the positive. Which ones do we want? The positive. So we want this part, negative infinity to negative 3, soft bracket, or 3 to infinity.
is your possible domain, not your solution set. I just want your domain. So take a look at the first two problems there. I should see work, not conversation. In the denominator. And what could the denominator not be? Good. Does it equal? So the denominator cannot be 4, and the denominator cannot be negative 3. I don't care what your solution is. I just, we're just asking for your restricted domain. So take this out of your number line. So negative 3 <coughs> negative 3. Don't forget the middle. Everybody good with this? 